So unfortunately, I have some bad news that I have to report on. Matt Hoover from the CRS Firearms channel here on YouTube was convicted this last Friday of multiple counts of transferring unregistered machine gun conversion devices, conspiracy charges, and now faces potentially a maximum of 45 years in federal prison. So let's talk about this. But real quick before we jump this video, if you think what they're doing to Matt at the CRS Firearms channel is clearly unconstitutional and violates the second amendment and clearly just violates common decency, go ahead and hit that like button and comment down below. Also, I want to thank the sponsor of this video, which is Sonoran Desert Institute. SDI is an accredited online college that helps students learn the skills and techniques they'll need to be successful in the firearms industry. So if you enjoy gun repair, ballistics, and learning about firearms, SDI might be a good option for you. To find out more about SDI, you can visit the link down below and thank you again to SDI for sponsoring this video. So as I mentioned in the intro, in this video, we're unfortunately going to have to talk about the really bad situation uh, that recently occurred, and that is the conviction of Matt Hoover over at the CRS Farms YouTube channel. This is something that should be concerning to everybody in the Second Amendment community, in the firearms community, in every single gun YouTuber that's here on this platform. Matthew Hoover from the YouTube channel CRS Firearms was convicted this last Friday of transferring unregistered machine gun conversion devices and also conspiracy. This is something I think that uh, really came as a shock to a lot of people in the community. I was shocked by hearing this because if you look at the facts of this case, the foundation of this entire case and all the charges and the charges against Matt specifically, um, they're really insane. And I really didn't think that this case was going to go this way, but unfortunately he was convicted by a jury. Now we've talked about this case in the past, but I understand some of you may not remember uh, what we talked about, what this case involves, or maybe you just don't know at all. So Matt Hoover is a YouTuber also known by his channel named CRS Firearms. In 2021, he was arrested and charged with eight federal counts ranging from conspiracy to the transfer of machine gun conversion devices, and also aiding and abetting in the transfer and sale of machine gun conversion devices. Matthew Hoover is dragged into this case because he created some videos on his YouTube channel in which he allegedly promoted the sale of some cards. Uh, these cards had some cutouts on them, some images on them. And because of this promotion, the uh, company that was selling these cards allegedly received more sales because of that direct promotion. And in return, Matt received some sponsorship money and also some other items of value. Now, because of this relationship and this sponsorship on his channel, the ATF claimed and charged Matt with conspiracy to sell machine guns. This case at its core involves the ATF and its actions of arbitrarily redefining on their very own what they consider to be a so-called machine gun under the GCA and NFA. In this case, the ATF took the position that a piece of metal with some drawings on it are in fact machine gun conversion devices. The government claims that the cards were conversion kits, even though the owner there, Mr. Irvin, the creator of these cards, he marketed them as a pen holder, a novelty device, a political sculpture, but the ATF claimed that the cards effectively operated as a lightning link. Another weird part of this case against Matt is that the government took the position that him setting up a legal fund, essentially a GoFundMe for the uh, owner of the company, Mr. Irvin, they said that that showed further proof of conspiracy between the two individuals. And so that's how they're further linking the two people together in the selling of these cards. The U.S. Attorney's Office released a statement on this issue. I will link it down below. And also I'll link a article from John Crump. A lot of this information I'm getting from those two articles. And essentially the uh, article or the statement from the U.S. Attorney's Office states that Hoover's videos advertising the auto key card led to the substantial increase in Irvin's sales. Irvin sold more than 2,000 auto key cards in only a few months. Irvin compensated Hoover for his advertisements by sending cash through the mail and on one occasion, a Louis Vuitton purse. Now that's kind of the foundation of how this case started. What's at issue, just essentially a card with some drawings on them, the promotion by Matt on his YouTube channel, and essentially the ATF taking the position that these cards are conversion kits and they're linking these two individuals together saying that they were illegally selling these conversion kits in violation of the NFA and GCA. Now let's talk a little bit about the trial. If you want a full story, like I mentioned, you can go read the Amelan article from John Crump. I again, will link it down below. Now, this trial lasted up to two weeks. I think it was two weeks. And during that trial, there were six viewers of Matt's channel who testified in the trial. Four of the witnesses stated that they purchased the cards only after watching the video by Matt 
in the video that he did on his channel. Now, those four individuals claimed that they did not intend to modify or to cut out those cards, the drawings on those cards, but there was one witness at the trial who I guess did testify against Matt, and he said he only bought the card with the intent to cut it out uh, and because of that promotion. He said that the promotion by Matt was what encouraged him to ultimately purchase this card and potentially uh, aim to break the law. Now, during the trial, the ATF presented some so-called experts and they showed a video of an AR-15 firing. It was firing in full auto and they claimed that they were using the cutouts from the card. The ATF claimed during the trial also that it only took them about 40 minutes and a Dremel tool to cut out the outlines in the card. However, also at the trial, the ATF admitted that they could only get one of the three cards that they had to actually work. Then the ATF revealed at trial that their agency had assigned 12 agents to go around and to collect these cards from the public who potentially purchased them. But eventually, all of those efforts were halted because the agency believed that uh, it was too um, costly, it was wasting too much money and too much time. So they pulled the resources of those 12 agents looking for these items. Now, at the end of the arguments, the prosecutors requested that the court permit the jury to be instructed that the cards are in fact machine guns whether or not they actually work. And also they wanted the jury to be instructed on the fact that all they needed to consider was whether or not the two men transferred the items and whether or not their intent was to transfer the claimed machine gun conversion kits to people who wanted to purchase them. Now, according to the Ameland article, Matt's attorneys asked for the case to be dismissed. Uh, the prosecutor asked for the judge there to deny the request. And the judge did not deny the request, but said she would wait until the jury actually returned their verdict before she decided whether or not to grant the dismissal. Now, as I stated at the beginning of this video, the verdict did come in from the jury. They only did five hours of deliberation and they found the two men guilty of multiple charges. Mr. Irvin was found guilty of structuring, conspiracy, and 10 counts of transferring machine guns. And Matt, AKA CRS Firearms, was found guilty of five of eight charges including four charges of transferring machine guns and one charge of conspiracy. Both Mr. Irvin and Matt were remanded into custody and allegedly the federal prosecutor said she personally felt threatened by CRS firearms, so he needed to be in custody. And currently there is sentencing set for July 31st. So that's what happened. Again, I will link two articles down below. One is from the government and then one's also from Ameland. And really, it's a sad day for the community. Um, my thoughts go out uh, to his family, to Matt himself, to his wife and his kids. Uh, my prayers go out to them as well. Um, I really didn't think that this was going to go this way. Um, and really, right now, I think as a community, we can definitely pray for them, uh, pray for leniency, pray that the judge here in this case sees the light of day, sees the light and um, helps out Matt. And hopefully, um, maybe even if it gets to this in appeals court, We'll also see the light and essentially just put an end to all of this madness. And hopefully we will have some, maybe some two-way orgs who decide that they want to step in, help on the appeal. Uh, because again, this is an issue, not just for one individual, but this is an issue of the community, of the two-way community, of the gun community. And really this shows how drastic of overreach the ATF is currently engaged in. So if you guys have any questions, go ahead and comment down below and I'll try to answer the best of my ability. Also, if you like this video and you would like to support the channel, one of the best ways to do that is to like, comment, and subscribe. All those things help to fuel the algorithm and it signals to YouTube that you guys see value in these videos and in this type of two-way news. As always, I wanna thank everybody who likes, comments, subscribes, who hits the notification bell, who shares these videos. You guys are directly impacting these videos, impacting this channel and helping me to reach and educate more people than I could ever do on my own. So as always, thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And never forget this nation was built farm scholars and this nation will be maintained farm scholars.